I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I am going to take a first look and give some first impressions of a new to me acid dye brand, the Pro Chemical and Dye Wash Fast Acid Dye line. Now this is a very popular line of acid dyes that a lot of different dyers use and they are located in Massachusetts, but I haven't ever used them before. And so today we're gonna do some crude swatches of each of these colors and then play around I think with two different dyeing techniques on full skeins to see what my first impressions are. Unboxing these dyes was a little bit loud because they were wrapped up in paper, but the box was packed with enough packing material that it couldn't easily be crushed and nothing could get shaken up through shipping. So that was really, really great. I will go through all of the color names as we start the crude swatches, but these are the two ounce jars. They are a little bit bigger than the Jacquard half ounce jar, but definitely smaller than the jars that Dharma uses for two ounces of dye. I still think I should be able to get my fingers in here to speckle pretty easily. At least I hope. The price of each two ounce container of dye does vary. With the ones that I purchased, I think I paid around $4.50 to a little over $8 for two ounces. And this is in the middle of the range of Dharma acid dyes, where some Dharma acid dyes, especially some pastels, are less than $4, and others are more than $8, depending on the pigments that are in there. And so I think that ProChem probably also has a similar way of pricing their dyes based on the cost of the materials that go into each of them. All of the dye containers contain the warning label on the lid itself, which I think is a really great place to put the label, reminding people to wear some kind of respirator mask and gloves while dealing with the dye. Specifically, in my opinion, the dye powder. Um, I always wear a respirator mask whenever I'm dealing with the dye powder, but I don't wear the mask once I have the dyes dissolved in solution. For the very first look at these dyes, I am gonna do a crude swatch technique, where I'm gonna take a little bit of each dry dye powder, put it on some yarn in low immersion, spread it out to get a feel for what its hue is. This technique doesn't really tell us much about the overall depth of shade, so how intense that color would appear if, say, we're using one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, but it can give us a feel of how the color may behave not quite when speckling because the dye will be a little bit heavier, but I do enjoy doing a lot of techniques where I dye with the dry powder directly, and so this kind of information helps me make sure I pick colors that have enough contrast with one another. Uh, unlike when I've picked colors that I thought would be different, like uh, I think a chartreuse and Kelly Green, and then they ended up being very, very similar and hard to distinguish in powder form. So that is why I do all of this now. <laughs> I am pre-soaking 500 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And I'm pre-soaking it in just some plain tap water for at least 30 minutes, so it's well saturated, and we can start our first project with these dyes. This video is not sponsored by either ProChem or Knit Picks, but if you would like to learn more about any of the tools and equipment I'm using in this video, I do have links and some affiliate links down in the video description. Uh, for example, Knit Picks links are affiliate links, the ProChem links are not. I spread out 100 grams of yarn as much as possible in my four inch deep full size catering steam pan. And now I'm gonna add some water that was a mixture of three tablespoons of white vinegar and eight cups of water. And I want to add enough so that way the yarn is nice and saturated. We're not going for the sharpest speckles or anything like that. Uh, I just am gonna want to see what each of these colors do. And so I think I've added maybe about four cups or so of water, but I'm gonna have the rest of the water just off camera so that way I can pull that in if I need to. And now I'm going to turn on the heat. And once things warm up, I will put on my rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and we'll start swatching these ProChem dyes. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low because I don't want to introduce any moisture into these jars. These jars are very, very full. This first color is Rhodamine Red. Whoa, that <laughs> is vibrant. Whoo, 
Ooh, I think that this is probably the most like fluorescent fuchsia or something like that. But definitely a pink. Okay, next up, and you can see that for weight, this one isn't quite as high up. Uh, this is poppy red. This one doesn't go nearly as high up in the container. And so you can see that different dyes have different volumes. And that's one reason why I recommend and a lot of dyers recommend uh, calculating dyes and depths of shade based on weight of dye, uh, the grams versus the volume of the dye. I'm gonna help, yeah. That pink's gonna go far. Okay, next up is watermelon. This powder feels a little bit like finer than some of the others that clumped a little more. Ooh, that's really pretty. And watermelon is a great description for it. It is sort of like a light red. And next up is deep orchid, which also looks even more compressed than some of those other dyes and looks like, ooh, this is like a berry, almost purple color. Very, very deep. Now I am noticing some spilling of powder further down from where I'm adding these colors initially. And <laughs> you know, that could be these, some of these colors may be finer milled. Once I speckle, I'll be able to give you more information on what the feel of each of the colors is like. But you can see from how I've spread them that the watermelon of these first four colors is the least pigmented so far. Next up, we've got saffron which is probably gonna be fairly golden yellow, but can lean orange depending on the depth of shade. That is something that is fun with yellows just in general. Once the yellow gets super pigmented, it's gonna lean orange. And then we have sun yellow, which I am expecting to be sort of just like a bright, bright classic sort of like primary yellow color and that feels pretty accurate so the collection of dyes i got here is not a starter set this wasn't like a oh these are recommended for first use of these colors or anything like that um, these colors were picked for another project that i mentioned but also then ones that i felt like i had to include <laughs> And so I am bringing this up because the next color I have is Sea Breeze. And I did not get <laughs> a green, I realized, when I was setting these out. And so this is, whoa, okay. That's not what I was expecting. I mean, maybe if I was looking at the swatches, I would have expected that. But, <laughs> woo, that is a bright cyan blue. Uh, this is nothing like what Sea Breeze from Dharma looks like. But we definitely have like our cyan, magenta, a red. So we do have our primaries here to play with for some color mixing exercises. And this here is Brilliant Blue, which does feel very, very similar, at least as a first impression, to the similar color of Jacquard. I forget, one of them has like brilliant yellow, and one of them it's brilliant blue. But yeah, so we've got the, I guess, warmer blue, and then the slightly cooler one. And this blue did not break, that was one of the pinks from elsewhere. But yeah, either of these blues, and you can see we're getting some greens from where they're spreading a little bit, either of the blues would work great for some color mixing. But yeah, if I had realized when I was checking out, because there weren't I think swatches in the cart or anything for me to look at. Whoa. Okay, cornflower blue looks like it breaks. I think this is one that we may need to speckle with just because I think it'll be really, really fun. It's looking really, really deep and almost navy right there. Now that's just because it is concentrated. Ooh, but it is very like purpley. I think more pastel. There, like as I spread it out, you see more of that cornflower feeling. But I definitely see red and blue pigments, and so I think that would definitely break with speckling. Next up is lilac. Another color that could conceivably, oof, again, it's very, very pigmented, but that is this first sort of look at it. Uh, and then as we spread it out, it does lean more 
lilac purple versus the cornflower, which definitely leans more blue as it spreads. And so I'm gonna come in and help it. But yeah, so as I spread it, and this is one of the things that I mean about using dyes as a crude swatch, like what we're doing here, versus looking at them at say a 1% depth of shade. Uh, it's that, you know, colors will behave differently. And so you could speckle with these three blues and have a lot of different hues in there. Um, but the watermelon, it's a definitely a different color from the poppy, but they are more similar. And so that's one thing that this, this helps me do. And now a color that I absolutely had to do is violet. Whoa. Ooh, this one could break too. I notice it change a bit as we add it to the heat. It is very similar to the lilac uh, in tone. It is a little bit bluer, like a hair bluer as I, as it sort of like works in and we spread out. So the lilac is definitely more pink and the violet is a bit more blue. As the heat comes in, you can see it spread a bit more, but <laughs> some of these feel so pigmented that I feel like that the colors could be more bright, but with the amount of dyes added in the small space, you really feel that pigmentation. Next up we have brown, which may break. I see different colored uh, powders sort of in here. So I am very curious how this will look. So it feels, I may, maybe it feels close to say like Jacquard Brown. It is a very true brown, a warm toned one. Um, I think it has a bit of like yellowish undertones to it. Uh, the brown I use the most often is Pecan Brown, probably because I really like uh, that it's a cool toned brown. Um, but again, Procom has a lot of colors that I didn't try, so this is not what the range is limited to, just the dyes that I purchased. <laughs> and then finally, and this one looks like a fluffy one, that seems like a lot, we've got black. Is it just called black? Wash Boss Black. Okay, I'm gonna tap that out in a minute. I'm gonna go put this down. I feel like, ooh. Now I've heard some people say that this is their favorite favorite black. I have no idea if it breaks with speckling. We'll probably try it um, when we do. I think for the other two techniques I want to do some dip dyeing and I want to do some speckling and I'm definitely going to use the black for the dip dyeing or sorry the black for speckling because you want to know if you could get good black speckles right? That is a question you want to answer. It looks like a very very good black. And so here are the 13 colors, which got a little bit more crowded as we went down. We have Rhodamine Red, Poppy, Watermelon, Orchid, Saffron, Sun Yellow, Brilliant Blue, Sea Breeze, Cornflower Blue, Lilac, Violet, Black, and Brown. So I haven't tried speckling with any of them yet, so I don't have the feel of them in my fingertips. Some of them look a little bit fine. Some of them look like you should be able to get like a good handle without mixing them with citric acid, but we'll see more about that in a moment. I'm not sure how many of these colors are pure pigments versus mixtures. I have a feeling that the ones that are most likely the mixtures are these three purple shades because those were the ones that as I added it, I felt either breaking like different hues from the different pigments in there as I was spreading them out. I mean, the brown is probably some kind of mixture as well. Uh, so yeah, those are things to keep in mind. And greens are often mixtures. I do wish I had a green. So again, don't evaluate this as a set that is missing a green because I forget how many different color options there were but there were dozens and dozens of different colors, and so I only picked 13 uh, to start around with. But for having 13 colors, I think that like of this list, the colors that you probably quote need to start with, uh, and I don't know which ones they consider to be the most primaries, but I would say that if you were gonna buy only say six colors, I would get the poppy, the rhodamine red, probably both the saffron and the bright or sun yellow, the brilliant blue, the sea breeze, 
and then probably also the black. So seven colors. I would get all seven of those colors because I think having a sort of warmer, more orange yellow can be helpful in some circumstances for some mixing, in addition to having just the traditional sort of bright yellow color. So now we've been talking a while and I'm curious, all right, there's still gonna be a ton of pink. I have a feeling eventually that's gonna spread out over the whole thing when I add more water. But okay, this color has not completely, but mostly struck. There's still some bits of yellow there. Okay, so we've got colors um, ooh, the blue. Ooh, both of the blues have, well, there's still a bit more. The thing with this technique of swatching is that we were adding dry powder, so there could be some areas that have more pigment and less pigment. Uh, I think that what I will do is leave this for five minutes, um, turn up the heat a little bit, and then we'll come and add more water, which will cause the colors to spread out. But the goal for this exercise was to just do a fast and dirty comparison of these colors to one another to understand what they are all about. So then I can pick colors that I want to combine together uh, for our next projects. It's been approximately five minutes, and now let's start adding some water, which will cause the colors to spread. Again, these aren't going to be perfect swatches for uh, determining like what the colors look like at a particular depth of shade, but we will see after these five minutes which colors I'm looking at you, Rhodamine Red, start to spread out and take over. Uh, that's why I'm sort of going a little bit slow. Uh, just because I was curious. Oh, and I suppose I should come with the spoon and just see, like the pink, yeah, that's that's gonna go, we're gonna let that spread all over. The poppy, there's a little bit of yellow, a little bit of saffron, um, some of that blue. The brilliant blue has struck. Uh, the, I think, lilac, struck the violet has a little bit more the black has a little bit more so does the brown but yeah it's mainly I would say this the sea breeze and the rhodamine red which honestly given the pigments that's what we would anticipate that's what we would expect so I'm gonna add the rest of the water that we started with and we're gonna take my tongs and move the yarn a bit through these colors. It's gonna let these colors spread a bit more. You can see the yellow. We're getting some green in here now from the yellow spreading onto the blue. Ooh, and we do have some more. This is just gonna help dissolve any powders that we had not dissolved yet. And this colorway is a very, very random one. That's often the way that these swatches tend to be, especially when we have so many different colors. But there is still something sort of fun and random to it. Uh, but moving the yarn will help if there was any powder that hadn't dissolved, it'll help it do that. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes and we'll check and see how those colors are doing. But actually, let's go ahead and just add a little bit more acid over that pink. Hey, let's just call it a hunch. <laughs> okay, it has been 30 minutes and let's see. I'm seeing the tiniest hint of pink left. I did move the yarn around during the dyeing process. And this is, you know, an interesting colorway. It is busy, it is chaotic. It could work up and be really fun, although a little bit random, but is something that you could also then go and over dye if you chose. But I know some people like, um, really like these swatch colorways. So I'm gonna turn off the heat, let it cool in the pan for a bit. There is only like a hair of some pink left. So by moving the yarn around, maybe that'll go on to some other part of the yarn. Okay, actually moving around there, I think that the pink will probably bleed a little bit because as you know, I put it down and I was moving it around and put it down again, I did see some color come out there, which is not a surprise for what is probably a fluorescent pink. Although I'm not seeing color in the pan right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside to cool completely and then we will wash the yarn. 
for our next technique, I want to dip dye some yarn into two different, very similar colors. We are going to dip dye 200 grams of stroll into lilac and violet because we saw that their tones were different. And so I think that will give us a beautiful colorway and we'll get to see how these dyes dissolve in liquid. I measured out one gram of each of these two purple dyes and dissolved it in some hot tap water to see how that would go. Of course, wearing my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. In my 12 quart pot, I have 24 cups of water and I am going to add, I think, six tablespoons of white vinegar. Four, five, six. If I wanted to see if the colors broke with dip dyeing, I would use half of this amount of acid and probably non-superwash yarn, but I figured we'd go for like a two-toned dip dye thing that will ultimately be very subtle because we are using two purples, but at the very least, we'll get to see what just the violet looks like, and who knows? If this color is way more pigmented than I'm expecting, uh, then we may decide that we stop after one color, but uh, I am going to go rinse out this cup with a little bit more water. So two grams of dye total is not too much color uh, to use on 200 grams of yarn. And so, yeah, we will see. Uh, I will be back once this warms up a little bit more. Okay, a moment ago I noticed a little bit of foam, but I didn't reduce the heat yet. And now I'm over here and we've got foam in like a gradient. Uh, let me see if I can make it a little bit less steamy. Um, and the foam is going down as I do that, but it's like deeper at the bottom and then like darker. This is weird. I don't know if there was a little bit of soap in here, but the color that is beneath it is definitely more blue looking than this pink. I mean, this is reminding me a little bit of, say, uh, how Wilton's Violet might break. That is very, very uh, interesting. Okay, I am gonna go get the yarn and we're gonna start dip dyeing. I think I've seen some things foam a little bit before. As I come in with our yarn, we're gonna start dip dyeing. Uh, yeah, I've seen little bits of foam before, but I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. And again, I don't know if maybe I accidentally had like some soap left in here or what. But I will say that this color, and I'm going, I'm trying to go pretty slow, moving the yarn around a little bit. That pink foam is throwing me for a loop a little bit, I will be honest. But yeah, I mean, it is breaking. For sure, I don't know what that pink foam is going to do, um, but like the color that I'm getting at the end is looking more and more blue to me. But I guess it's hard to say because I'm like trying to, I don't know if like that was pink crashing out as I'm trying to like move it and maybe absorb some of those pinks. I still see pink in the in the water. So if I dip this all in, like we weren't necessarily trying to break the colors. And actually, because when I was saying like, oh, maybe it's breaking, like the end is looking light blue, but I think that maybe it's just that there's some pinks in here that haven't really struck yet. Because if I were to look at this color right here and that color, like, yes, there's a lot of blue at the end, but I'm not feeling very purpley yet. So, yeah, this is interesting. Very, very interesting. Like, there's a very pink finish there. And the foam is gone now. So if it was soap, that foam wouldn't stay. So maybe it was, like, when the dye got too hot. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but okay, let's add all of this yarn in and I'm gonna leave it in here. Let's do like 15 minutes and then we'll decide if I'm gonna proceed with doing the lilac on the other side or what, which, you know, we may still do that, but I'll come back in about 15 minutes. I'm sure 
I have had other dyes foam in the past and the foam is now gone which means that I'm more inclined to think it had something to do with the dye. Uh, this color does have some hints of pink to it and I don't know if it's because of the foam. I like see it in some little patches. Ooh, but I definitely, it definitely breaks. Um, I'm seeing some broken things. I'll, I'll show you this in a moment as we're gonna move the zip ties. But I do think I wanna proceed and dip dye the other end into the lilac just because I'm curious what that will look like in the end. Um, and I'm gonna rinse out this cup. So this is a pinker color. Um, so we should end up with something like really subtle and nice. But let's go over to the counter and just take a closer look at the violet. Okay, and so here it is. And there's definitely like the ties, whatever these ties are made of have picked up a little bit more pink, but there are some like notes and sections where I feel, and like here, um, at this lighter edge, where I feel some like bits of pink and then some bits that are absolutely more blue. But I'm not sure how much of that is from the foam, which definitely had those pink pigments, um, or the color on the sides. So, uh, this is a color I will need to explore more. I do feel like a little bit more pink absorbed at the bottom um, than the top. There are areas that are definitely more blue and areas that are more pink in here. So I think, anyway, this color does deserve its own deep dive. We can speckle with it and play around with different techniques just to see how it behaves. And that's something that I would love to explore in the future. I love violet. But for today, I am gonna take the yarn and transfer the zip tie down to the deepest end. And I'm gonna do that on both skeins so we can dip dye into the other color. And so we're no longer gonna necessarily see like if the one color is broken, even though, I mean, you can see all those colors in there. It's subtle, but it definitely broke. So I think that the foaming was something to do with the dye because if it was soap, the foaming wouldn't have disappeared once I added the yarn. At least I don't think. And it definitely happened when things were pretty hot. And so I'm not gonna control for that at the moment uh, to see if that happens with this color as well. Um, you know, I know, I know I've seen foam happen at some point in the past. I just don't remember what color it happened with. But we're gonna bring in our still hot violet yarn. Ooh, and start dip dyeing into the lilac, which is definitely definitely more red, but we knew that from our swatch. And what's fun is that, I mean, I guess in theory, if you think lilacs, because of the purple on the lilac bush, you would expect it to be more pink than say a violet, which is a much more blue kind of purple color. But it was fun in the swatches to see that they were distinct enough that I felt we could do something like this. And the colorway will be very, very subtle. Um, because the two colors are two different very purple shades. There are some light patches towards the top here, and so I do wanna go in and add just a little bit to get some color on there. Yeah, but we are starting to clear. Um, and so I think that this is fun, and I definitely wanna explore doing some dip dyeing in more, like two very similar colors, versus things that have more contrast. And sorry, I keep throwing steam up towards the lens. Now at the proportions that I use most often for dyes, this ratio of two tablespoons of vinegar to eight cups of water, um, these colors are absorbing pretty quickly onto our yarn. And so, yeah, they're performing very, very nicely. I will say, we are now, even with dip dyeing, gonna have a total of one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And, oh funny, I don't know if that moved through the zip tie or what. And so these colors are quite pigmented, uh, which is really, really nice. I am wondering if I like didn't move one of the zip ties right. I am a little curious how um, it's looking a lot more solid, but I do promise there is more red in one side. Oh yeah, you can see there's more red there and more blue in the violet. This is really, really pretty. But anyway, 
I'm gonna add all of the yarn now and we are gonna let this heat for 30 minutes uh, to absorb the rest of that little bit of color. I do think the differences between the two ends will be a little bit more uh, easy to see once the yarn is dry, um, but we'll be back in 30 minutes to check in. The 30 minutes are up, and let's take a look at these colors. Oh yeah, that is clear. But we are now going to remove the yarn from the dye pot to set it aside to cool so we can go ahead and wash it. But oh, you can definitely see the differences between the colors. It's so fun. For our speckled colorway, I picked black, cornflower, and deep orchid. And I picked these because cornflower I think breaks, and so I wanted to see that. Uh, black, I want to know if the black breaks or not. And then the deep orchid was a very beautiful color, and so I thought it would look well with the other two. I am adding 200 grams of stroll to the dye bath. And now I, we need to add some liquid and some acid. I have a mixture here of eight cups of water with three tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm adding some in. I think I've added probably about five cups of this mixture total, which will cause for some spread with the dyes, but I don't mind that often when I'm speckling. Um, and I'm just sort of spreading the yarn out to expose as much as possible. But if I move it to the side, there is a little bit of liquid there. And that's what I would like to see. So now I am going to turn on the heat and we are going to start heating up the pan so that way we can speckle with the dry powder directly and using my gloved fingertips. And of course I will be wearing my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves since we're working with the dry dye powder. And to help uh, remove dye that are on my fingertips between switching colors, I have a yarn mop here that is Knitpick's Hawthorne fingering weight yarn, 80% superwash fine highland wool, 20% polyamid. And I soaked this in some water with vinegar, and so we'll steam set it once we're done with everything. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. We talked about moisture before, and in addition to making sure your gloves are clean of other pigments before going into the dye containers, you do also want to make sure that your fingertips are dry. So we're gonna start with the black. And eventually I will speckle all over with all of the colors. But to start, um, I think I'm going in a little bit heavy with the black. Let me release some. This container is so full. Um, as you see, I did sort of spill some down there that I have to get used to sort of the, the texture and whatnot of the fiber. Yes, I've definitely spilled some further down, uh, which may uh, affect our ability to evaluate the other colors at least a little bit. But this color looks very, very pigmented for all there's, I guess we could call some of this fallout. I did eventually like wipe my fingers there, but um, there was some fallout from it over there. Do the cornflower now. And so here the dye isn't as close to the surface, so there's a little bit more room for me to like sort of dust off some of the dye back into the container. A way that you could deal with this to avoid some like fallout like I saw with the black is just by transferring the dye you're going to use for speckling into another container. Um, so if I took that dye and I just aliquoted it into a cup or something, then I would have more space to have more control. But I am seeing some blue and red speckles from the cornflower and that's really, really pretty. Uh, the Ooh, that's, that breaks so beautifully. Um, I'll zoom into everything in a moment. Uh, the colors are all sort of setting very nicely where I placed them. And I found that it was pretty easy once I uh, let myself remove some of the dye from my fingertips, which I didn't quite do with the black, to get it. And it, there's a nice like granularity to it that makes it a little easy to speckle. The black felt a little bit more clumped than these other two colors, but we'll give the black another shot once I flip the yarn. I mean, we'll be using all the colors more on the yarn, 
But the box specifically, I will take another like close look at it and give it another good shot. <laughs> Now the fallout from the black that I mentioned was really just here in the pan where I was holding the container and some fell off. I did just go and wash like the floor in between the counter and the stove and I did not find any evidence of dye there. So that is really good. But let's zoom in and take a closer look at these colors. The cornflower has brilliant, brilliant breaking. There is a very deep blue and then this pink and the pinks initially gave like sharper red specks but in the like minute or so that I've moved those have sort of spread out and streaked a little bit which is a glorious effect. It does remind me a bit of say Wilton's Violet. <laughs> uh, not that each like speck was m like a combined pigment but it's fun to just see how the different colors are striking. And I am very, very pleased with the quality of these speckles that I got from, you know, this first little attempt. With the black at first, as I was speckling, it definitely clumped a little bit more, but I think I had picked up too much dye in my fingertips. We are seeing some spread there. There's enough water here that we would get some amount of spread, but the colors do seem to be striking pretty quickly. We are able to get super sharp speckles and I think that once I hadn't picked up too much dye, I was able to get more of a spread. And these are sharp. There is still like a little bit of spread, but that isn't a problem. It might need more acid. But what we do see is that this black does not break. I am only seeing black speckles here. So with other brands of black, say Jacquard Jet Black and Dharma Toner Black, you get occasional red or yellow speckles in with those colors. Uh, so Dharma True Black has been my favorite black so far because it doesn't break. And I think that this Procam and the color is just called black is also a very, very good sort of true black uh, pigment that doesn't break that could then be used for a number of applications. It looks to me like that deep orchid breaks. I'm seeing pinks and then occasional pops of blue in there. But I will say these pops of blue are frequent enough that it makes it a very lovely feature. There are some colors where you'll speckle and then occasionally you'll get a random yellow speckle and then you're like, oh, well, I guess that's there, but that wasn't what I was going for. And so when you get different colors, but the second color shows up a little bit more, then that becomes more of a feature that is fun. And I will say the color combination in there looks remarkably similar to the color combination in the cornflower. I don't think that I added some of the cornflower over there. I really do think that the blues that I'm seeing in the orchid are from that dye, but it's fun to see the pinks in the cornflower look like the pinks in the orchid. I'm sure this is information that we could look up, uh, but sometimes when companies have a mixture versus a single pigment dye, they don't always say everything that's in there. But I would absolutely pair these two colors together for loads of different projects. I am going to let this sit, I think, just five more minutes because we've had some time here as we've been chatting. And then we'll flip the yarn to dye the other side. And again, I will eventually be adding all of these colors all over, but I figured that we'll flip and we'll try just the black again at first to see if I can get the speckles like a little sharp or more spread out. But so far, the cornflower blue is the one that I'm like the happiest with, even though I like the other colors too, but um, that had a good finger feel to it. Okay, I normally I might wait like 10 minutes in between flipping, but we chatted for a bit. So, ooh. So I see like a little bit of some spread to the other side, but not much. So these colors are striking pretty fast. I mean, I specifically did not pick the, the blue or pink that took longer to strike. Uh, so <laughs> there is that. Um, but let's come in and into this like middle area and try the black again. I mean, we're gonna add all the colors, but specifically we're gonna do the black right now. I tapped the container in my counter to see if like I could lower the amount of dye a little bit. Okay, and I'm trying to like dip off. Now this is, I still have a fair amount of dye in my fingers. 
Um, this is a clumpier, a clumpier die, and so yeah, for to get the finest black speckles, you don't need much in your fingers at all. Uh, a little bit of this die goes a very, very long way, and so I would recommend um, adding some to another container so that way you can really sort of wipe it off your fingers well, but it is working really well as I go just all over with it. So I'm going to let this sit for a moment. I don't think this will be as big of an issue once uh, the container gets a little bit lower down, but we're getting gorgeous like deep speckles that are a little bit bigger because I had a little bit more powder in my fingertips. I mean these over here, ooh, they are punchy, but you know it will come down to some practice also if you want to get like finer micro speckles versus versus more punchy bigger ones and there are so many different ways that you can speckle i think that just when you're dealing with a new brand or color of dye it can take some practice until you know sort of how much you want to pick up and allow to fall from your fingertips as you're using it i'm going to start adding on some of the other colors now certainly there are so many different ways that you can speckle and so many different colors work different. Like the cornflower blue, I'm feeling it is more granular feeling. So I can take a bigger pinch, but then I'm still able to spread it out a bit more than I was, say, the black. And I mean, that's, that's all fine. That's all good. And we're going for something really heavy speckled here today. Uh, but I'm also okay with that. And it's fun. So yeah, when you're playing with different dyes, you will start to get a feeling over what is works best with which colors and which colors work well for speckles and things like that. And you can always mix the dyes in with some citric acid to make it a little bit easier to spread. A lot of times when I'm mixing dyes with citric acid, I use not that much dye for the total amount of citric acid that I have, but you're definitely not limited to that. And you can absolutely use a lot of citric acid and do say a one-to-one -one ratio of citric acid to dye just to dilute it a little bit. If it's a color you would like to spread out a little bit more. But yeah, I'm going pretty heavy here. Yeah, I went a little heavy with some of that pink orchid, but I'm fine with it. Sometimes I like going a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for 10 minutes and then I will flip the yarn and keep adding more dye. I love these colors together so much. It is so moody. Um, I think I am pretty satisfied with the coverage. I, I could keep speckling forever. Uh, I absolutely, absolutely love it. <laughs> but these dyes worked great for speckling. Um, I think that, you know, I have to get a little good handle on some of them, but, you know, everything is a learning process. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm pleasantly not pleasantly surprised. I'm happy with the way these dyes are. Of course, I wasn't expecting to not like the dyes in any capacity because I know that it is a well-known, well-liked brand. So I just added the rest of the water. Uh, it, we don't have a ton of liquid in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and heat everything for 20 more minutes to make sure things are well set. And as for our lovely yarn mop. We've got beautiful soft coverage that actually goes really nicely with the speckles, but I'm gonna steam set this off camera for 30 minutes. The 20 minutes are up and I'm gonna turn off the heat and just let the yarn cool completely here in the pan so that way we can go and wash it. I would have combined washing this skein with some of the others, but I'm a little nervous that the pink might bleed a fair amount. And so I figured it's worth letting it wash on its own. I'm gonna add some clear dish soap and I am seeing maybe a tiny hint of some pink come out. Typically, uh, oh wow, actually that's more than just a little bit of pinks. Okay, I am going to, I think, leave this in the soapy water to soak for a little while. 
One other random thing I realized, this dish soap that I've started using has ethanol in it, and so there's actually like more ingredients to it than just like the standard other uh, dish soap that I've used in the past. And so I don't know if that means I've been seeing more bleeding with this Wegmans dish soap than the 365 dish soap, but that is something that I am keeping an eye on a little bit, and so Maybe for the rest of the yarn today, I'll try using this other dish soap. All right, let's come back and see how we're doing. All right, I mean, I had suspicions because when I removed it, I saw some pink leaking from that section. I honestly, I should have known when it said rhodamine um, because I believe that that's that fluorescent pigment, but I, so I should have known when I saw that, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, there's still a slight bit, so I think what I want to do yeah, is set this up um, in some slightly warmer water, and I'm going to add some simple. Now, I do have a video where I found that using like this soap works pretty much as well for back staining as the Synthropol, but this soap that is designed with dyeing and textile, or at least marketed with dyeing and textiles in mind, could be one to use to help try to pull out the dyes. And honestly, here, I'm no longer seeing that color leak out, so it's possible that we were done anyway. Like, so the center pole is not going to help the color set more. Uh, and the bleeding that I'm seeing here isn't specific to Prochem. I've seen this with pretty much any other neon pink dye that I've ever used. So anyway, I'm going to let this sit for, I think, another 10 minutes, and then we'll pop back over. We are back. All right, I don't see any color. Ow, oh, crud. I was like, lift it up, great, squeeze it out, fine. But that actually makes more sense. It makes more sense for there to be something that squeezes out because I was surprised that it was just immediately clear. Um, but let's go ahead and rinse this and rinse out all of the soap and see where we are. Because hopefully we got all of the unbound dye out. And now that is looking really good. I'll do one more on camera. Okay, I now, I mean, we'll squeeze it, but I'm not seeing anything else. Great, great. All right, I'm going to put this through the spin dryer and we'll bring over the next yarn. Next up, I've got our speckled yarn and the yarn mop. Um, and here, I would say if there was going to be bleeding, it would probably be because there is some like dye that didn't dissolve completely. When you're doing a technique with dry powder, bleeding can definitely happen. But so far, so good. I'm, I'm gonna add some of this soap <laughs> because yeah, I just noticed that, that one other soap makes things bleed more and I don't know about having ethanol in there. So we definitely ended up with some more color spread in some of the areas. I don't know if it's from moving the blues or what, but I don't mind. Um, I like having enough water when I'm doing speckles immersion style to let those colors spread out. And so I really enjoy that. But I am not seeing any color come out here. So I am gonna go ahead and rinse out the soap, put it through the spin dryer, and we'll get our dip dyed yarn to finish all the washing. And last but not least, we have our purplific yarn. I don't think I've done something quite like this. I've certainly done like teal to blue, but I haven't done like two very, very similar colors quite like this. And I have to say, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and the good news is that with the first dip, not seeing any color come out. Let's add some dish soap and fill this back up with water. And let's see. Fingers crossed. I'm a little nervous because we had that foam 
<laughs> show up, but I don't know if that pink was crashing out or what on earth was going on there, but it looks like we are good. So again, finish rinsing out the soap through the spin dryer. And now let's look at all of the finished dry yarn. Here is all of the yarn that I dyed for my first look at the Pro Wash Fast Acid Dyes from Pro Chemical and Dye, which I will otherwise be referring to as Pro Chem Acid Dyes for the rest of the video and probably in the future as well. But I did want to make sure to give the full titles so that way if you want to learn more about the dyes yourself, you can easily find exactly what I'm referring to. This video is not sponsored, but I do always try to include links of the dyes, yarn, tools and equipment, etc. that I use in my videos so that way you can get the same supplies I used to try to replicate my results or build on my results in your own way. So my video descriptions are all filled with links and affiliate links that are clearly marked if you would like to learn more about anything that I use in my videos. It's always worth checking there for more information. I purchased 13 different colors for the first look, but also another project. And the one color that I did not buy specifically for this was a green. And that's not because there aren't greens in the collection. It's just I neglected to add one to my cart to include in this first look. Procom actually has over a hundred different acid dye colors. And so there are a lot of different shades that you could play around with. But I do always like to say you don't need an entire line to get a wide range of color because you can always mix your own. I am very happy with the range of colors that I have and I know that I'll be able to do a lot with these moving forward. I dip dyed the yarn into violet and I think the other color was lilac. And what is surprising here is how much depth in tone we have here. So not only do we have our deeper saturated colors, but there are also some more lighter segments as well. And I think it's just so, so pretty. And it was so fun to play around with this as just two different purples. Because a lot of times I think with dip dyeing, I will more intentionally pick colors that are more different or colors that might blend to create another secondary or tertiary color. And so I think that it was just fun sticking with some things that were a lot more subtle. The violet does have some reddish tones in here that I can see a bit. I did include it in with the blues that I swatched in an episode of Dye Pop PS, but the violet color, it foamed. I don't think that was soap because whatever those bubbles were disappeared later on. So I don't know if this color is tricky. I don't know if a lot of things, there's a lot of things I don't know. But when I did swatch this color cold, it showed up bright pink. And so this is a color that I will need to explore more. I'm sure it'll need its own in-depth video at some point playing around with Prochem's Violet Acid Dye because yeah, there were some things that have piqued my interest a bit. The color itself is totally gorgeous, uh, but yeah, it's behaved in a way that surprised me a bit. So I'll, anyway, I'll have to see if I can try to replicate the conditions where we made it foam to see if I can do that again. I picked three colors of the Prochem dyes, black, I think cornflower blue, and a pink to speckle with. And I think that this yarn is gorgeous. The cornflower blue absolutely breaks and I think is just a really fun color. It would be fun just completely on its own without any of the other colors, but it was gorgeous with them. It took a little bit of time for me to get um, my hand with the black dye, uh, but it is able to speckle really, really great. There are some examples around here of some nice tiny black speckles. But overall, I found that the black dye is a little bit more clumped than the other colors I used, which it was a little bit easier to get, say, the, the blue to separate more. Uh, when speckling. And this could be just based on the pigmentation of these colors. If the black has a lot more pigment to it, it and less fillers, therefore, then 
it might just be a little harder with the straight powder to spread it out. So mixing it, even with a one-to-one -one ratio with citric acid, might help uh, for this dye with speckling. And that is also something I intend to try in the future. Now one or a few of the colors definitely have some yellow in it. Uh, there are some pops of more yellowish specks throughout the yarn, which ultimately isn't a bad thing, and that can happen in a lot of premixed shades, even with other brands. But it is just worth pointing out so that way you wouldn't be surprised if that happens with these colors. I think that the, the pigmentation of the black that I got on here is really, really great. Here's one of my more heavy handed black sections. The Difference in the handiness of the colors, the way that they speckle and how much each of them spread, that's something that you'll see variety with color to color across different brands. Finally, we have the yarn mop that I created during the speckling, and the colors spread out on here a fair amount. I use this to wipe my fingers on it as we were using the colors, and yeah, I mean, I think that these dyes in general just perform really, really well, and this is just a fun... Uh, still kind of speckly to some respect because there are places where we have tiny patches of the colors But ultimately it is more softer and the colors are all a little bit more blown out than they are in the speckled version Overall, I am very satisfied with Prochem's acid dyes and I absolutely would order more colors in the future or reorder some of these colors that I really really like I'm not the biggest fan of the jars. I like that they're small because then you can fit more in a box. It makes it easier to store them. But what I don't like as much is that the jars are so full, which makes it a little bit hard to deal with speckling directly from those containers. So in the future, I may also take like a small portion of the dye out of the container into something to make it a little bit easier to deal with that way. But ultimately, I think the size of the jar also depends a lot on the size that you order, and I ordered the smallest quantity of the dyes. As there are over a hundred different colors, when and if I go and buy more, I would only get a couple. I am not planning on getting a complete collection of all 100 plus dyes that are in this line. Mainly because I currently have five different brands of acid dyes in my collection, and a few of those I have uh, the complete line. And so I just don't need a lot more dye. I have a lot, I don't really need more until I have like worked through more of what I have already. So two ounces of dye can last years. Uh, it depends on the quantity of yarn that you're dyeing, and if you dye, you know, hundreds of skeins in a colorway, then you will go through the dye a lot faster. But if you sort of play around and do a lot of one-of-a-kind colorways, it takes some time to move through one two-ounce jar of dye. So that all depends on what you're doing. But anyway, the reason for me not going and buying more of this is not because I'm not interested in other colors and want to explore it more, it's because I have limited space. <laughs> to store a dye, and so that is that is the reason why I am not purchasing more of this or other brands at this time. So this was just my first look at Prochem Acid Dyes, and there's a lot more that I will do with them in the future. So now I pose the question to you. If you are a dyer and have played around with different brands of acid dyes, which brand is your favorite and why? Please let me know down in the comments below. And while you're there, give the video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. While there are some dye colors and yarn bases that are clearly my favorites and that I use over and over in my videos, I do try to vary the, not just the dye brands, but the dye types. I try to vary it and color and yarn base so that way we can all learn together and figure out what we like and what we don't like. And so hopefully my opinions and thoughts are helpful. So subscribing is the biggest way you can support the content here. Uh, if you'd like other ways to help support the content, I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, and a Patreon. You can find the links to both of those down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.